What's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna do a Bitcoin technical analysis, but we're also going to try something different. I've actually pulled up a couple of different on-chain metrics that I've actually thought were extremely fascinating and I've wanted to share it with you. I don't wanna waste any more time, so let's simply dive into the charts and let's analyze. As you guys could see, Bitcoin unfortunately hasn't really been doing anything in the past 18 days. Obviously, that is not the same case if you're holding on to altcoins. Since we've been consolidating within this range for almost the past 100 days, we could divide this section into two different portions, right? Anytime we are above $99,000 BTC, let's just make this region yellow, it's safe to say that everybody is calling for new all-time highs. Anytime we trade below $98,000, which is this region right over here, people are calling for 80 or even $70,000 BTC. Now, if you have been paying attention to crypto Twitter or just the influencers here on YouTube, that was pretty much the sentiment that we, once again, we have experienced for the past 100 days. Now, I do agree with the fact that, you know, if, 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 and that possibility is extremely, it just keeps getting slimmer and slimmer as the day go by. But if we do break above $101,000 on BTC, right? We're gonna be entering price of discovery. But what the more ideal thing for us to do right now is that we need to hold $92,600 level right over here. Reason being is because if this gets broken, when we look, look to, over to the left-hand side, as you guys can see, this is clean traffic right over here. And our next level of support is exactly at 86,700 bucks. Now, I do wanna go over and start diving into some on-chain metrics. Shout out to Andre, watch, interesting index by check matey that suggests that bitcoin is points for a breakout i'm personally leaning bearish on the macro but very bullish on on-chain developments sellers are exhausted could very well be that it will break out towards the upside now this was posted on february 13th so when we take a closer look here at the bottom every time the choppiness index goes above this right over here which is 60 points we're actually in for some sort of a breakout. So let, let's compare it. Right over here, where we're getting choppy. The choppy index was above 60. What happens? We had a breakout. Something very similar here. We were, we've experienced extremely choppy price action. Bitcoin ended up breaking out. Same thing over here. We've experienced some choppy price action. Bitcoin ended up breaking out. And as you guys could see what is happening right now, same exact thing, extremely choppy price action. Now, if you guys are paying, have been paying attention to my previous videos, I did compare this price action to this price action right over here, which is in fact extremely similar. When we even zoom in on the lower time frames, anytime BTC based on historical data has dipped below $92,000, $93,000, bulls quickly stepped in and ended up buying all of that selling pressure. Let's continue. Shout out to Alex. During this cycle, there was only one major panic sell-off in September of 2023. For the rest of the time, hodlers have been realize hodlers have been realizing more profits than losses. Once again, going back to Bitcoin's chart, literally all the way since December of 2022, we are just creating higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. Who knows? Maybe we are going to kind of come down to this level right over here at $86,000. But the overall trend, ladies and gentlemen, is still in tech and it is still, in fact, bullish. Now, in regards to panic selling, this cycle alone, once again, September 2023 was the only time where people panicked. Now, let's not ignore the fact that every time Bitcoin consolidates, it, is, it does not absolutely nothing. People just kind of lose their minds. People just go ballistics. We are so greedy and we are comfortable. We're also used to, you know, constantly chasing gains that it's extremely difficult for us crypto bros to take a couple of days off and just simply do nothing. Another post by Alex, long-term hodlers have reduced their spendings by 60% compared to 90 to 100K level, down to 40K BTC per day. The next, the next trigger for experienced investors to start selling will be at $120,000 level. Once this market is surpassed, investors will secure a 500% profits, which will compel them to sell regardless of the market conditions. Now, I do want to make a quick comment on this because so far in the past couple of months i feel like the only thing that we have been experiencing was just 
institutional inflow. And in order for us to have a health, healthy price movement, we need retail to kind of start flocking into the market. And now, unfortunately, in the past couple of days, the market conditions haven't been so great. And it all pretty much started the one day. Wow, it was literally 20, <laughs> 31 days ago when Donald Trump actually released his poop coin. And then everything else just kind of cascade downwards since then. People almost forgot about utility. People almost forgot why they're, why they're in this space to begin with, but instead they're just chasing gains. But in order for us to obtain this $100,000 level, we need retail to start flocking into the market. That's what we need. Because institutional inflow alone is just not going to, it's not going to be enough. Bitcoin bounced from 93,000.5 and reclaimed 95,000 for now. Each rebound is weaker, signaling a lack of spot volume for stronger move. Meanwhile, the risk index is flashing warning signs for more downward pressure. Until 97, 98.5 is recovered, 92,000 remains the key downside level to watch. Something pretty much that I have said, right? So let's actually go back to the charts. And, and let's elaborate a little bit further. We have tapped into this region once, twice, three times, four times, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, kinda. Okay. Now, as you guys know, the more times we tap a specific level of support, what happens? The weaker it becomes. So as long as the law, the, if we're going to tap into this region again, and if we're going to see some sort of a price action, literally right or hovering, slightly above this level of support chances are that it's going to break and it's just going to be once again a quick flush to this region right over here which is eighty six thousand seven hundred, in my opinion now in order for us to be a little optimistic in the market what do we need to do once again we need to pretty much close above this region we need to enter this bullish box i guess i want to call it so we could be temporarily <laughs> bullish now we do have a little bit of optimistic news within the market. Institutions are still buying. Smart people are hopefully dollar cost averaging. Shout out to Andre. Note, high frequency indicator by Trueflation implies a decline in US headline inflation over the next couple of months. So that's obviously a great sign, both for the market as well as the economy. Abu Dhabi Sovereign Wealth Fund bought $436 million worth of Bitcoin in, their, in Q1. Even though in the past couple of months, we've seen a huge institutional inflow. Shout out to Christian. Let's just round that up. 70% of Bitcoin's total supply is held by individual investors, creating scarcity for institutional buyers, with only 5.7% remaining to be mined. You know, such a simple post, yet extremely important. I feel like a lot of people are forgetting that Bitcoin was actually created, what, 17, 18 years ago, and majority of the people, once again, are individual investors. It was literally last year, in 2024, where for the very first time ever, politicians and institutions actually show some interest. Now, let's keep in mind that the minute these guys received permission from their own low, from their government, and which allowed them to purchase Bitcoin, they these guys literally went all in obviously on a macro scale we are going to experience a lot a lot of volatility i mean after all that's what bitcoin and overall the cryptocurrency market is known for but on a higher time frame i do think that bitcoin is going to play a major major role in the financial shift and this is something i i do not need to discuss with you guys at this point anyways i forgot to tell you guys man smash the like button subscribe if you haven't haven't already done so and just guys drop a quick comment for the algorithm man hopefully you guys enjoying the content Let's continue. Bitcoin is going through a deleveraging process. The 90-day aggregated open interest delta of the 17th largest exchanges clearly shows that in the past, when positions are closed or liquidated, BTC undergoes a deleveraging process and, and two behaviors for the price are expected. One is a drop and the other is a prolonged sideways movement. I mean, let's take a look at the chart, the chart here. We could either look at this chart or we could look at our chart right over here. I've made a comparison, ladies and gentlemen, multiple times. Sideways consolidation is painful and it hurts. But every time we've consolidated with time, the only thing that BTC just continues to do is continues to make new higher highs. Consolidation like this is painful. It hurts. It sucks. A lot of us, a lot of you guys are not used to it. Look at this right over here. We've consolidated for 217 days before we took another leg up right over here. We did absolutely nothing for let's just round it up 60 days. 
before taking another leg up right over here 224 days before taking another leg up and then here a hundred and just a hundred days and then hopefully we'll be able to take another leg up once again the levels that i'm paying attention to are these levels at 92,600. Now, right over here, very good point. Recently, I've seen a significant deleveraging, a sign of many liquidations and the closing of institutional positions, almost like liquidity reset. The lower the ratio, the lower the chances of liquidation, especially for those positions in long, as they dominate the majority of the open interest. So right over here, we have an example of the ideal leverage. Now this was taking place in 2021, right? Now, right over here, we have extremely high leverage. And then right over here, we have deleveraging. Who, where does the high leverage comes from? Degenerates, me, you, every problem. I'm pretty sure majority of you guys who are currently listening this year, we have, <clears throat> it's much easier for us to register for any of these exchanges. People are just going full speed ahead with with leveraging it's it almost seems like when you even look at the historical data right it just almost seems like it's up only season and when it's up only the open interest is extremely high and we barely we don't even have time to for a reset which do in fact make the markets a little bit risky anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video once again subscribe to the channel drop a comment drop a like let me know what you guys want me to go over next and i'll see you guys in the next video